Hello and welcome to another remote edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we'll catch up with Quincy Council on Aging Director Tom Clasby. Find out what's happening at the Kennedy Center. First, though, we check the news for you. Currently in Quincy, there are 1,173 cases of coronavirus. 834 people have recovered and there have been 113 deaths. There are now almost 95,000 cases statewide. City of Quincy stands to lose at least $14 million in revenue due to the coronavirus pandemic. Quincy City Council is in the process of reviewing Mayor Thomas Koch's proposed $340 million spending plan for the fiscal year that begins July 1st. Uh, this week, councilors learned that state aid will decrease at least $9 million and local receipts will be down by at least $5 million. In addition, mayoral spokesman Christopher Walker says the city may have to pay at least $2 million in pension payments for Quincy College employees. In a world in which the two entities were totally separated and that was independent authority, Yes, they would probably have to find someplace else to figure that out. Um, which, considering the road that they've been down since the nursing program closed and, and what they're dealing with now, um, our option with them is to hold off until see if they make good on the revenue. And if they don't, then as a city department, we would absorb that burden like we would any other city department for this year. Although self-sustaining, Quincy College is considered a city department, and the city would have to cover the pension payments if the college is unable to come up with that money. The mayor has said the goal of the budget is for no property tax increase and no major cuts. Former Norfolk County Sheriff and former interim Quincy College President Mike Bellotti of Quincy, now a candidate for Norfolk County Treasurer. Bilotti and Quincy Ward 2 Councilor Brad Kroll are seeking the treasurer's seat, which is being vacated by incumbent treasurer James Timulty. Bilotti served as sheriff from 1999 to 2018, then served one year as interim Quincy College president. He was a state representative for four years prior to becoming sheriff. Uh, the September 1st state primary will also feature a special election to fill Bilotti's term as sheriff and races for register of probate and county commissioner. A new skate park will be opening up soon at the Pond Street Playground in Quincy Point. The city is in the process of replacing the 20-year-old skateboarding park with a brand new facility designed to meet the needs of today's sport. The new park will feature all of the obstacles and features that skateboarders say is needed. New landscaping and benches are also part of the project, which is being funded with a $480,000 federal grant. A grassroots organization lobbied Mayor Thomas Koch for the new park and he agreed to tap federal grant money to pay for the new facility, an August opening with limited capacities being planned. Well, despite the pandemic, Quincy veterans who have died in service to their country were honored this past Memorial Day. A larger than expected turnout at Mount Wollaston Cemetery was held with proper social distancing and an abbreviated ceremony with no parade and no formal guest speaker. Quincy Graves Registration Officer George Bouchard explained a recent project that involved the documentation of every veteran buried in Quincy and the revitalization of 18 Civil War gravestones. About this time last year, we, uh, we looked over here at the Civil War uh, section and uh, you could not read any of the names on those stones. So Linda Burchard and myself did a little research with Scott Logan to see if we can get these replaced. In order to get them replaced, you need all the information. And Linda went out and got it for us. She submitted the paperwork into me. I filed the applications, 18 of them, and we received 18 new, brand new Civil War stones up here at the section. And if you see, there's a Civil War soldier over there today. But Linda had bigger ideas. She said we need to come up with some sort of database for the cemetery on veterans so we can find them a lot quicker, which I agreed. So we decided one day to go out to the sections with a piece of paper and a pencil and start going to the graves and finding the veterans and writing the information down. 
Four and a half months later, we were done. We now have a database with the help of Tom Mead over at the IT department. So if you were to call and find out where a veteran is buried, we will know within 30 seconds. So we're very happy about that. The names of every Quincy veteran who has died over the past year were read aloud. And the Pledge of Allegiance taps were played during that service. Coming up, we chat with Quincy Elder Services Director Tom Clasby. Find out what's happening at the Kennedy Center next. Of questions about the coronavirus? I'm here to share some simple steps you can take to help protect yourself and others. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 plus seconds. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue. Clean and disinfect surfaces and objects. Wash hands after touching commonly used items. Together, we can help slow the spread. Here are AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. Form a team that can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of essential supplies in your loved one's home. Make a list of the care recipient's medications. Schedule regular calls to fight isolation. Finally, take care of yourself too. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety. For more caregiving tips, go to aarp.org caregiving. checking in with the Quincy Council on Aging Director Tom Clasby to get a little update on what's going on behind the scenes at the Kennedy Center and beyond. Tom, uh, great to, to see you. How are you? It's good to see you, Joseph. Uh, I'm looking forward to the day we can do it in studio, but for now, this uh, this is, you know, thank God for the technology, really, when you think about uh, in years past, uh, particularly in 19, uh, which is, was 16 or so, that, that the uh, Spanish flu hit um, to not have something like this where you could communicate with other folks, friends, loved ones, you know, I mean, it's very scary. This is this has been difficult enough to be isolated, but um, imagine doing it without this kind of technology. Yeah, it's true. We are very fortunate. Have to look at the the bright side of things, and this has been able to uh, at least keep folks uh, connected, even though not in person. Uh, it's it's the next best thing and the safest way right now, you know, uh, certainly. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing I noticed right off is uh, the new uh, facial whiskers there, Tom. Uh, yeah, well, I was joking because, you know, as, as you know, my, my home, although we have a home here in Quincy, I have primarily uh, resident up in Central Mass. So um, I've been joking with you when they say, what's with the beard? I say, well, you know, we have plenty of toilet paper in, in Central Mass, but no, uh, no razors we can get at, you know. But, <laughs> I figured it, it's funny. From time to time, I've, I've grown a beard, but it's always like those first weeks that are, that are uh, looks like you have a dirty face. Yeah. <laughs> so we, I took advantage of no one being in the center and uh, I figured that uh, br bring it in, much to my wife's chagrin. So I don't know how long it'll last, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait till folks start coming back. They're not going to recognize you. Say, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been yeah. at the Kennedy Center uh, all through this, right? I have been. We, we, we never, uh, although we closed to the public, as you mentioned, you know, for safety reasons, but we continued to operate in a uh, small capacity. The transportation program, and I'll tell you, boy, my drivers, I'm just so, so grateful. They really rose to the occasion. Um, none of us have ever lived through anything like this and it was frightening for for many um but they rose to the occasion we continued to transport to uh uh chemotherapy treatments for dialysis and if there were some other kinds of uh most of the doctors were shut down but there were occasionally some kind of a medical reason that a doctor needed to see a patient we were able to get them in there and uh very very grateful to the staff they just tremendous um in addition to that, we've had a skeleton crew on throughout because a lot of what we do, as you know, is we're a conduit to other agencies. People don't know how to get Meals on Wheels, so they call us. It's uh, South Shore Other Services, but we'll, we'll um, either, you know, 
give them the information they need or make the referral uh, call ourselves to to hook them up with services that they need that are provided by other service providers so so we've been in here it's been it's been quiet in some respects um, but we've been doing some things that we never do for instance if a person was and not just a senior but if a person was quarantined because of the virus and had no other means of getting uh, getting food uh, we were working with interfaith are working with interfaith to uh, provide them with uh, with food so um, you know we've been we've been doing an awful lot really since uh, you know we haven't just been haven't just been sitting around we've been we've had had things to do so it's good and it's 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 kept in my life a little bit of a sense of normalcy because we've been coming in every day um, you know I, I really count myself as fortunate for that reason. Yeah, it's so uh, important to have a routine uh, to stick to. Um, it's very helpful, and I'm sure it's helpful for folks. You know, they're used to dealing with, with you and your staff, um, regardless of, of what they need. So to be able to talk to a, a friendly uh, voice, you know, and, and somebody that they're familiar with to be able to get the services is, is, I'm sure, a huge comfort for them. Absolutely, and the staff's been terrific. We've just initiated things on our own, like we, we, we did phone calls just to check in on uh, members here. Um, see how they're doing and you know just let them know that we're still here if they need something um we also sent out a whole bunch of cards you know just thinking of you mm. which uh you know we we signed and we got tremendous feedback from people that it meant an awful lot to them that they that they weren't forgotten about you know the other thing too is i mean just as the community in general and and for seniors like we got a ton of people that wanted to volunteer in the very beginning of it um we didn't have as great a need because a lot of the seniors have family close by, you know, um, there are those that are isolated and we've been able to meet those needs, I think, but, but many of them have family and friends and neighbors that are close by. And I, you know, I've, I've often thought Joe, and I'm sure you, you know, would say the same, this thing, you know, it brought out the best in, in the worst in people, but I think for most people it brought out the best in them. And, and, and that's great. I think you're right. And, you know, if nothing else, it, it makes you pause and reflect and, and uh, be thankful for the blessings that you do have um, yeah. in life and, and be more mindful of them, not take them for granted, I think, going forward. Right. Um, and, and this, you know, this, this whole pandemic has so disproportionately affected older people and, and, and you know, the elderly and the, and the sick um, and the folks that are in nursing homes and assisted living. But it must be frightful, you know, as, as, as I get closer to that age and thinking, that, <laughs> yeah, right. oh, yeah, I know. if I'm feeling it, imagine somebody who's 20 years, 25 years, 30 years older um, than me. They must be very scared, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, and, and I think it's, it's, it's uh, well, like, like any demographic, you know, the seniors, don't all fall into one category. There are a few that maybe you wish they were a little more fearful than they are. You know, <laughs> people say, "I lived through the world wars." I lived. So, so, and that's good in the one sense, not to be gripped in fear. But this is a real thing too, and you want to make sure that that we do those things that are necessary for us to to conquer it. You know, um, and and I was somewhat critical of of uh, certainly not you guys at QATV because you do such good work, but some of the 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 the, the big media and ABC I remember put a thing on the death toll and the scary music and everything, and I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah, you know. Um, so, but I think you have to find that balance mm -hmm. that that it is real. Um, it, it, it and, and and you're right for for our. Uh, age group, uh, the, for the, and when I say our, I mean the, the age group that we serve, um, uh, you know, you, you, you want to make sure that they do all the right things. Now, in some respects, Joe, we were a little bit ahead of the game here mm -hmm. because cold and flu season is something, you know, that's, that's um, a difficult time. We, we, we do lose folks during regular cold and flu season. Sure. As a result of that, we're very sensitive to it. So like before really the COVID thing hit, we had the Can Kennedy Center all sanitized. Mm. I mean, I, 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 we do that on a normal basis. And there's things that just signage and reminding people that it is cold and flu season, that they should wash their hands. And we never did anything with social distancing or masks or anything like that. But having people be conscious of it and, you know, um, and really to, to if they didn't feel sick to, to, 
to make sure that they contact, I mean, if they did feel sick, to make sure they contact their doctor and not to come in uh, to spread it around. So right. it's something, you know, that's been in, in, in uh, the back of our minds and that we address on a regular basis. So there was kind of an easy transition in some respects. And of course, you have the greatest resource of all right there in uh, in Ruth Jones and the Quincy Health Department, you know, under the same roof. Um, it's I'll tell you, you know, she's terrific. She's come down when we've had questions and, and have helped us kind of with um, plans as we move uh, forward, which is, we can talk a little bit about that. But there's still, you know, quite a bit up in the air. But just, um, you know, being there for us and, and really to watch her and her staff and the tremendous, they've been in here you know, seven days a week yep. um, and, and, you know, serving, serving the public really have done outstanding, outstanding work. And I know that they brought in folks from the Quincy police department uh, early on, you know, some of the detectives to locate folks and um, uh, some of the nurses from the school system have been in too, manning the phone. So really they've, they've done a great job and, and continue to do a great job. Yeah, the city is really fortunate. It really was ahead of the curve in many ways, um, you know, before the state guidelines um, came out. They'd already started to work with the homeless uh, population to, to separate those yeah. um, testing. Yeah, and Ruth, right. And Ruthie met with us early on, you know, before there were really any cases and just said, you know, this may come, kind of giving us a, a, a an idea of what to expect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate. One thing that typically would happen in the month of May, as you're well aware, is the Senior Olympics. Um, I know it. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, we we when it first came about, I was thinking, well, we'll probably, you know, we we didn't cancel the Senior Olympics right away, um, thinking that maybe, you know, we'd be out of the woods by now. Um, but uh, as it turned out, it just it just wasn't possible to do that. And you know, again, safety's got to be the first uh, the first priority. The sad part about it is, um, you know, so many of those folks are people we only see during that time. They come from other communities, many of them, and others. Um, you know, I always say like the Kennedy Center is just one thing that we do you know beyond that you know transportation is not necessarily we transport a lot of people that never come down here um some of the other outreach that we do throughout the city isn't directly related to the kennedy center so the kennedy center is the the lion's share Mm -hmm. um of how we communicate and see our folks but it's not the only way and and the senior olympics is is um you know some of the some of those seniors that participate in the senior olympics are still working but they take off those weeks you know, two weeks in May so that they can participate. So those would be folks that we wouldn't see on a, on a regular basis. And it's always, it always strikes me in the very beginning, the opening ceremonies and the couple of days that follow is how many reunions occur and they get caught up, you know, they, yeah, how you been? How was your year? How are the grandchildren? You know, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's kind of a neat thing to see. Yes. And reunion with the, with the, with the recreation staff, those yep. kids are just great. And they look forward to it. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's generations have gone through that program. It's, uh, you know, how many years now for the Senior Olympics, Tom? Oh, man, before my time, Joe. I always used to have to rely on Barry Welsh for the, for the right. uh, specific time. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's 30-some-odd years yep. now. Yeah, so think about that. You know, I mean, one of the recreation kids who was maybe in high school when they first started, you know, 16, 17 years old, and <laughs> now they may have their own kids, you know. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, have you heard anything at all from the state in terms of reopening, Tom, and how that might work? Well, the difficulty um, with the reopening is, as, as we mentioned in the beginning, you know, safety really has to be our first priority because this is a, a group that's particularly at risk. And, um, you know, there are some things that we, we can do. We sanitize. We, we, we've actually always had um, hand sanitizing things in every room but we have them at the at the two doors as well we're putting in now some uh you know droplet shields the plexiglass shields um the real tough thing is going to be limiting um you know the number of people that that can come in at a time right and i'm not really certain how we'll do that it may very well be that we really will have to wait until we reach this phase 
four, um, where we're pretty much certain that we're out of the woods before we can really open up and and um, and have people in again. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know that as a certainty. We're just kind of trying to banter around how we would do it. The the problem is, um, is how how do you how, if you're limiting the classes? You know, do we do it via a lottery, and then you you always have the fear that the same names are going to get chosen, or you know, um, some of the things are classes that go on for a certain amount of weeks. So if they participate in that, then they're going to they're going to there's a commitment there for, for a number of weeks. Uh, or it may be that we open very slowly and just have, you know, size classes or something mm-hmm. like that. The things in the gym would be a little bit easier to do because it's very large and, and you know, we should be able to socially distance fairly easy in there. Right. Where it becomes difficult is the classrooms, yep. um, you know, so. So I wish I had a very clear answer for you. It's still very much up in the air for, for us. The building itself, I mean, we, we, we sanitize it now uh, a couple of times a day just for us that are in here wow. um, because the drivers, uh, you know, go out. They have, their vans are done first thing in the morning. They go out. And, and then as they come back, you know, we want to make sure that because, and, and on us too, we may leave and, and, and grab lunch or something like that. You know, you don't want to bring anything back in <laughs> with you. So the building is done in the morning and in the afternoon, several times actually throughout the day. Sure. So I have no fears with that. Um, but, you know, fears with, with numbers is, is something that we have to, we have to really yeah, I see, like uh, we've talked about all along with other folks, this is uncharted territory. You know, it's, I mean, it was over 100 years ago that there was a pandemic. So the, right. there's nobody around that, that knows how to get through it. We're just kind of writing it as we go. Uh, exactly. So we'll take it one day at a time. Are you able to do anything virtually? Have you been doing anything virtually? A little bit. Um, we, we actually, you guys were very great to us in terms of putting on um, our yoga class has been on now a couple of weeks, Tuesdays and Thursdays, the regular time on QATV. So that's been great. And some of the instructors um, that come in have notified their students. So they're doing it uh, via Zoom and, and, and uh, the, you know, some of the other technical uh, uh, things that are out there. Yep. So, um yeah, we've been able to we've been able to reach out to some of the folks. Okay, great. Now, you know, I couldn't help thinking through all this how important it was that you had those you know computer classes for so many years. Um, I'm sure a lot of uh, older folks are using their skills that they learned right now. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, so it's great. Yeah, one one step at a time. Um, is there anything that you need there at the Kennedy Center, Tom? In terms of, um, will you be all set for you know clean supplies and masks, things like that, going forward? No, yeah, the maze office has been great. You know, they took a full kind of uh, inventory of uh, how many uh, employees we have, and um, you know that with the emergency management department are, are going to supply us with. Uh, with Matt, we've had we've had stuff in here. So if we've been for like I said, we're probably ahead of the game. We never had masks in here, but in terms of sanitizing and cleaning equipment and really top of the line kind of uh, stuff, we we would be a department that would be ahead of the curve on on that. You know. Yep, that's good news for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know that there has been plans in the works for a long time about you know, improvements and expanding and, and maybe updating your outdoor facilities there. Does this slow that down? Do you think? A little bit, yeah. a little bit, but um, you know, that that's an ongoing thing. We're continuing to work on, on, on outside. I will say this, we've, we've been able to do some improvements in house while the uh, place has been shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, our maintenance crew are tremendous. They've been working on some projects and the floors have been done and, you know, there's been painting that's been done. People see it. People see a difference. We, we, we got some new furniture for, for the, uh, uh, for the cafe. So that's all been spruced up. Yeah. Yeah. I want to give folks uh, something to, you know, look forward to. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, if people do want to reach out, Tom, if they have questions, uh, or, or sure. The main number, uh, 617-376-1506, the best, um, to call. Um, but 
yeah, they, they that, that or we like we're in. So email if they want to go on the city website, they can they can get connect, connected to us through that. Okay. Um, we we are here. We're ready to take your questions, and if you just want someone to talk to, we're happy to do that too. <laughs> yeah, that that can be a huge help, you know, especially if somebody's uh, having a bit of a crisis at that moment, just to be able to reach out and talk to somebody. Absolutely, I I have to say that I was. I was very, very concerned about, so I was reluctant to close, although there was no question that we had to. I'm talking about very early on, before we really realized, or I really realized the severity of it all. But I, I, I you know, social isolation was really a deep, deep concern um, for me. And I, although I, I, I think, you know, we won't really know the effects until well after this is um, over, um, but, but I am pleased with the people that I've had the opportunity to talk to and to see how that they, they, they are coping, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's, that's good. And, and like I said before, you know, neighbors and friends and relatives that are close by have been there. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's an important reminder. I talked to uh, Mike Festa from uh, AARP Massachusetts. Oh, sure. Yeah. About, uh, just about that topic about you yeah. know, self-isolation and they have some of their own, programs for state, you know, statewide, um, that folks can reach out to as well, um, through the AARP if they need, if they need help or services too. Right. Uh, of course they're lobbying at the state house, uh, you know, for legislative changes too. You know, Mike, and, and you, I don't know if you went into his background at all, but he, you know, he worked at the state house and then yeah. he was the, he was the secretary of elder affairs. Yeah. I was on the advisory board up until just recently. I was president, actually, of, of the advisory board to the state secretary. And Mike was secretary when I first came on, on board, um, just for a short period. But every secretary since we've, we've worked with. But he did a great job. And he's doing a great job with AARP. Sure. Um, you know, one area that we talked about just briefly that I'm sure the state will look at is conditions in nursing homes and assisted living and, and, you know, what kind of safety procedures can be implemented to avoid this kind of thing in the future. Right. Right. Yeah. No question about it. I mean, I know the Quincy's cases, the number of uh, fatalities we have are primarily a nursing home. And, and I think that's the case throughout the Commonwealth. Um, so, uh, you know, if there is any uh, good thing that can come out of tragedy, uh, no doubt that, uh, you know, that, that'll be something that'll be addressed and hopefully we'll come forward to do a better job with it. Yeah. Anything else we should let folks know about right now, Tom? I don't think so. I think we uh, covered it all. We're just looking forward to next year's Senior Olympics and uh, <laughs> hopefully well before that we'll be up and running and having people come in and just want to encourage them not to forget about us to get down here when we when we can open. All right. Good news. And we hope that comes sooner rather than later, for sure. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Good to talk to you. Likewise, Joe. We'll see you. All right. Be well. Take care. Special thanks to Tom Clasby for joining us today. Thank you to our crew working remotely from home. Thank you for watching. A reminder, please participate in the Quincy COVID Memories Project by submitting your videos, your photos, art, poems, stories about how your life is impacted by the pandemic. Just upload your submissions at quincyculturalmemory.com or you can send them to the Thomas Crane Library. Attention local history, 40 Washington Street, Quincy, 02169. Also, please do visit our newly redesigned website, qatv.org. You'll find all of your favorite programs. There's news and information now streaming live. Coming up on Monday's program, we'll chat with State Senator John Keenan of Quincy. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please be safe.